Hey everyone, so in today's video, we're going to be comparing Dash and Streamlit in terms of making dashboard. So I will have three basic elements in any dashboards. So I have a text field, I have a slider and a table, and we are going to compare that how it works in Dash and how it works in Streamlit. Let's check it out. First, we're going to assume that you already know how to set up your Python in environment variable. You so you can run your Python using CMD like this. So in my case, I'm running Python version 3.12. And then what we're going to do next is to install your Streamlit and Dash. So just do the pip install Dash. Okay, now Dash installation is done. We're going to proceed with Streamlit. Okay, now the installation is also done. I've prepared the basic codes for both Dash and Streamlit, so we're going to take a look what is the difference between the two. We start with Streamlit. So the way Streamlit works is it handles interactivity by reloading the whole script from top to bottom, unlike Dash where it handles interactivity with JavaScript elements. So the advantage of Streamlit is quite obvious where it is fast to learn and also fast to set up. So depending on your project size, if you think that the project won't go very large, then you can go for Streamlit. And the UI is also nicer if you do the basic setup compared to Dash. So we're going to take a look at this example where you have a data frame and then you already have a title here. And then we have a text input, we have a slider and we have a radio. And then how to run this project is by going to your folder and then start a CMD here so if you don't have open command window here then you can just go to CMD and use the CD to change directory so how you run it is by streamlit run and then your Python name okay so this is just the very first time we use streamlit so you have this screen so allow and then we will have this page already actually the streamlit page looks very nice without setting up anything without setting up any css we can just rely on this basic css basic layout because typically we do not inject any additional css if we are working with streamlit project okay now what we want to do here we want to put a name here and the age range as you can see, this is a slider, and then we'll select a gender. Okay, so now what we want to do next is let's put it side by side. Okay, now it works much better. And then we want to filter the data frame according to our slider, right? So, first, the search we want to filter the data. So, let's say data will be filtered by the search if there is search. Let's try to simulate this. So we assume what we want to filter is the name, whether the string contains the search. The way we view the data frame is by doing st.dataFrameData. There are other ways to do this. Probably st.dataFrame is the most common. Now we are applying the filter. And if it is empty, then we are going back to the original state. So basically, if there's no inputs, it will not go to this condition okay now next our job is to apply the age range so the age range if we want to debug something you can do st write age range so actually the age range here will be a value right let's see how does it look like so let's turn on the auto rerun age range is actually a tuple containing the minimum and the maximum range so how we make use of this is okay let's put over here uh, data is to be filtered with the age range so we do it the normal data frame way so age be greater than age range 0 and data age less than age range 1 reload the page if it doesn't want to it works very very well okay one more thing so this is the filter by age and 
Next one is the gender filter. Again, we want to check how does it look like. The gender filter actually says all and then male and then female. So actually this is just a string. So we can directly use it in our filtering process. The same way as name, okay, except we are doing it for gender equals to gender filter. But there's a special condition here. We have the all. Okay, so if it is all, then we do not want to filter it by the gender filter. So by pass the filtering if it is all. So for female here, we don't have that age range. Yep. And all will show all the genders. Okay, all works pretty well now. Actually, anytime you change anything, anytime you filter any elements, anytime you click things, the whole script will run from top to bottom. And this is very obvious if your project is very large. If your project is large and there's a lot of elements in the page, there will be lag. So for example, the top element is already loaded, but it's still loading the bottom element. So you cannot directly load the bottom element without loading the top element. So that is one obvious problem in Streamlit. Whereas in Dash, Later on, we can learn that we can update just certain elements in the page, the way JavaScript works. Let's move on to Dash. Now, this is how to create the main layout in the page. As you can see, this is very much more complicated than how Streamlit works, right? Because Streamlit is mainly for rapid prototyping. So if you want data, you want to present the result to stakeholders, and you don't have much time to deliver the development, then you can go for Streamlit. But if you understand that the project will go big, then I would recommend you to start with Dash instead. Okay, so this is how you arrange the layout. So it is really HTML based and JavaScript based for the event handlings. And Dash is actually more lightweight in a larger project compared to Streamlit. Okay, so this is your main script that is used to run the server. Actually, it's now has been replaced to dot run instead of run server. So how to run this is quite similar. Let's stop our Streamlit project, right? Python-.py. Oops, I think I cannot name it dash.py because it conflicts with the name dash itself from the original library. So let's just change it. Dash project. Does it happen with Streamlit dash project? Okay, now we need one more thing to be installed in our pip yeah, dash table. So we do it by, yeah, typically when you find something like this, then usually the name of the library itself on the pip install is the same name. Try to run again. Yep, that looks good. And then we can open this link. Ah. Very good. Yep. Actually, now we have the elements. The layout or the main styling of Dash versus Streamlit is very different. Streamlit looks more modern, whereas with Dash, you need to work a little bit on the styling. Especially, you can put Dash bootstrap elements for that to make it nicer. Okay, let's just work on this basic code so we can understand the differences between both. The way it handles the events is by using the callback. So this is the structure of the callback. App.callback, and then you're gonna put your function name. This function name can be anything. And then we're gonna put the parameters here. Okay, and then we're gonna fill in the functions later. Now, we have the data frame in here. And then as you can see, the way we make table in Dash is also a bit proprietary because this is the Dash way of creating table, whereas the data frame that we have is just like a bridge to make the data table, right? So we convert it to dictionary and then even we have to specify the columns for that. Yep. So let's demonstrate how to do this. First, you need to specify what are the output variables that you want to do in this callback and what are the states and what are the inputs. So the ordering is here will be the output, here will be the states, I mean is the outputs, yeah? And here will be the inputs. So the outputs, we need to specify the outputs first. And then when we are done with the outputs, then we specify the states if any, 
and then we specify the inputs. In our case, what will be our output here is coming from here. What we want to update is the dash data table. So the ID here is table. So how we do it is table is based on this idea. And then, okay, let's make it to my table so it's clear. And then what we want to update is the data inside. So this depends on the type of element that you are dealing with. So whether you want to update the data or you want to update the styling or you want to update the children of the element. So you need to look up the documentation for that. Now states, we do not have states because state is like what is the current state of the thing, right? We want to read the current states of the element. But what we want to read here is the inputs. So here we don't have, okay, the inputs. The inputs that we are trying to read, let's look up the names. Here we have the search input, which is a dcc.input. Okay, we put the ID in here. And then again, what do we want to read as the second parameter? Yeah, so in this case, we are reading the input. Let's copy that because it's pretty much the same for the rest. So we want to read the gender. Let's put the gender at the third position. And then let's read also the H slider. All right. So we have arranged our output states inputs. We cannot put or we cannot mix these things together. So let's say we put input before the output, we can't do that. So we must finish all the outputs first. So in this case, we only have one, but we can increase it. We can put more output here. Let's say you want to output it to two outputs, but you can arrange it this way. But what we cannot do if we mix them together. So this will be the place for the outputs. And second, the ordering must be the states. And the last one will be the inputs. So how we send it to the parameters is the states and the inputs will become the parameter of the function. So in this case, the so the output, let's talk about it later, but for the states we don't have here, and for the inputs, the inputs, the first input will arrive as search, the second input will arrive as the second parameter, the third input will arrive as the third parameter. So in case you have state here, let's say, let's say you have state my table and then children. Yeah, for whatever reason. So in here, you must put another parameter. Yeah, so in this case, this will arrive as this and the second one will arrive as the second parameter and the third one will arrive as the third parameter and so on. Let's remove this complication for now. So how we want to update the table. So basically, the goal, okay, let's make a copy of the data. So we do not modify the original data here. But first, let's remove the param here. So we keep it aligned to the callback. So this is three parameters and there is three inputs. So what we return here, so we return df. Okay, here we only have one output. I'll show you later if we have multiple outputs. Let's save the file. Oops, okay, I forget one thing. We need to convert this df to dictionary. So it'll be handled by the data table. Okay, let's see the result. Yeah, nothing happens at this moment because we are not doing the filtering. Now, let's do the filtering as if we are filtering the data frame. Actually, it will be quite similar. Let's take some of the codes from here, right? Okay, and adjust it to our needs. Of course, um, the search here will not be the search. Okay, let's do it this way. The search will be uh, because we have the similar naming, but we need to do it a bit differently. So if the search is not empty string, then we do the searching. Okay, the data here should be df. Yep, 
because our naming is slightly different. Okay, so that's the search. And then the age range, the age slider. Now, I want to know what is the value of this range slider. Let's change the naming. So let's adjust it to our current naming here. But I'm not sure if the age range is actually a tuple as well. Let's check. And then also let's see what will happen if we just normally print like the normal Python print. What will happen there? And then gender as well. Yeah, it will work straight away. Gender. And then gender. Data here is DF. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Yep. Of course, I think there's the error because this is some debugging steps as well. You can print it and see what happens, right? So when you print, the value will arrive in your console. So you see here, search is none. So you cannot do it this way. You can change it to is not none and search not equals to empty string. I think this is the safest way. And then age range also, I want to know what is the current age range, right? So now, very fortunately, the age range works similarly with the streamlit counterpart where it is a in this case, it's a list containing two. So the way we access this list is similar with accessing the tuple that is produced by the streamlit counterpart. So it works similarly. So now, very fortunately that our dashboard here already works. So the edge slider and then also the gender. Now the difference between this and streamlit is what is being re-rendered here is just the this one, the table only. Whereas the rest of the element, if you have a table before this or you have a table after that, then all those tables are not re-rendered as opposed to Streamlit if you have multiple tables. Now, one more thing to demonstrate with you how to return multiple outputs, right? So we can have another simple HTML element. For example, HTML let's say div and then this will be your subtitle for whatever purpose right so you can also put id here my subtitle and then you want to update this subtitle when you do the filtering right so you're gonna put the output my subtitle and then you can update the children of the my subtitle Okay, children means the HTML children. So when you do two outputs like this, what you need to return is also two variables. So here, let's just indicate the number of data that is returned after the filtering. Let's do like length of DF and number of data. Yep, so this will indicate the number of data. So now we have five data, right? Then after we do filtering, we return two data. We do filtering again, David, only one data. Yeah, so this is how you do multiple outputs. Okay, now we have compared Dash and Streamlit. Go ahead and decide which one you want to use for your project. The consideration is if your project will go big, then you use Dash. I think it's a must because if you use Streamlit, then if you have a lot of elements, then all those elements will be re-rendered from top to bottom unless you do some caching, which is I would think that's not very convenient for bigger project. And then for Streamlit, if you are running out of time and you just need to showcase that dashboard result or analytics results to your boss, then you can go for Streamlit. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe.